If you're having difficulty receiving forms in your inbox, this tutorial will guide you through simple and effective steps to make the process easier. This tutorial will teach you how to use JavaScript together with email.js to send emails directly to your inbox. After submitting a form, a spinner is displayed until the submission is successful, at which point a success message is shown. Let's start by setting our initials. We'll begin by creating a title. We'll need to create a style.css and script.js file in the root directory. After creating these files, we'll link the style.css file in the head tag and the script.js file before the closing body tag of our HTML file. To begin with, let's create an HTML form. For this, we need to create a form tag inside the body element of our HTML code. We will assign an ID called contact form to our form element and we will set the action attribute to a hash symbol. In this tutorial, we will create a simple contact form with three fields email, name, and message. To begin, we need to create a label for the email field. Each label will help identify its specific input type. We will then create an input field with the email type. It is important to specify the name attribute for the input field so that we can retrieve form values. We will also specify the input class and placeholder. Once we have created the label and input field for the email, we can simply copy the label and input field for the next field, which will be for the name. We will change the label information for the name field. For the name field, we will change its input type to text, change its name attribute to name, and change its placeholder. For the message field, we will also have a label. We will use a text area for this field and specify its name attribute. We will give it a class and the number of rows this text area occupies is 9. We will also specify its placeholder. For form submission, we will have a button of type submit and we will give it a class. When the user submits the form, we will display a loading icon. To do this, we will create a div with the class loader. We will use lenicons for the spinner icon and paste its CDN link under the head tag. We will use its spinner icon and paste it under the div with the class loader. Finally, after the message submission, we will display a success or failure message to the user inside the div with the class form message. We have finished creating the HTML form and are now moving on to CSS. Although this tutorial is primarily focused on using JavaScript to send emails, without CSS our code would be incomplete. I will be copying and pasting the CS code from my GitHub repository. You can find the link to the repository in the description. Let's proceed with copying and pasting the CSS code to give our form an elegant look. Now that we have styled our form using CSS, we need to style the loader and control its visibility. The loader element has a class of loader and will be displayed when the user submits the form and the form submission is being processed. It will have a width of 100%, padding of 10px on all sides, a grey background color, a top margin of 10 pixels, centered text alignment, and a font weight of 600. As the loader will be hidden initially, we will set its display property to none. In the upcoming section of this tutorial, it is crucial to pay close attention as we will be discussing how to send emails using JavaScript. To achieve this, we will be using email.js which is a free and straightforward tool to use. To get started with email.js, we will follow the official documentation and copy the CDN link into the index.html file. Before we can start using email.js, we will need to sign up for it. 
The documentation will also provide us with the initialization code we need to get email.js up and running. We will copy and paste this code, including the public key, which is required for initialization. Once we have completed these steps, email.js will be successfully initialized and we will be ready to start sending emails via JavaScript. To declare a variable that cannot be reassigned later in the code, we use the const keyword. To select an element from the HTML document, we use the built-in JavaScript function document.querySelector, which allows us to select the element with the class form message. We will now go through the official docs and copy the code for sending an email. As I am going to receive an email in my Gmail account, I have to manually give access to email.js. For this, I have to create a service and add Gmail, which will prompt for authorization. After accepting, we will be done adding the service. This will give us a service ID, which we will simply copy. We will use this service ID as the first parameter. Similarly, in email.js, we have to add a template for receiving our email. Creating and setting up the template is really easy. First, we will click on Add Template. Then we will open this template in the editor. We will remove its default template. To fetch the form value, we have to include the input field name attribute within double curly braces. For example, for the email input field, we should include its respective name attribute which is email itself, in double curly braces. Similarly, we have to specify the name for our name input field and message field. After finishing, we save this template. Then we have to grab its template ID and paste it as the second parameter. When the user submits a form, we need to show a loader to notify them that the form submission is in progress. To do this, we will select the element with the class loader using the document.querySelector method and add the class show. Initially, we have hidden the loader class in CSS. So we need to target the show class, which will be appended when the user submits a form. We will simply set the display property to block. When the user submits a form, a spinner icon is displayed. However, it does not have any loading animation yet. To add the animation, we will target the icon in CSS. First, we will set its color to white. To display the rotating animation, we will create a keyframe animation named Rotating. At the start of the animation 0% progress, the element is set to rotate by 0 degrees and at its end 100% progress, it rotates by 360 degrees, completing a full rotation. We just need to link this keyframe animation with our icon using the timing and repetition function. We need to execute a function when the form is successfully submitted. First, we will clear the input values of the form upon submission. To do this, we will select the element with an ID of contact form and use the reset method. After a successful form submission, we will remove the show class that hides the loading animation. Next, we will clear any HTML content present in our MSG variable by assigning an empty string to msg.innerTML. Then, we will append the success message within a span tag that has a class of success MSG. Similarly, 
The form message element with the show class will be initially hidden. So we will add the show class to it. Also the success message will be displayed for a few seconds and then it should disappear. To achieve this, we will use the setimart function to remove the show class after 2 seconds. To display form message content only when it has the show class, we will first set its display property to none. The width of the content will be 100% with a dark grey background color. The content will have a top margin of 10px and text alignment will be centered with a font weight of 600. Now only when the show class is present, will we add the display property of block to make it visible. Finally, in CSS, we'll style the element with the class that displays the success message. We'll set its color to green and its line height to 3. In case of a form submission failure, we will execute a function that toggles the show class displaying the error message. We will then append a span tag with the class error message using the msg.innerTML function. Finally, we will style the error message by setting its color to red and line height to 3. After changing the template ID parameter and submitting the form, we received an error message. By following this tutorial, you have learned a simple and accurate way to send emails using JavaScript. EmailJS is a popular library that simplifies the process of sending emails and we have covered all the essential aspects of using it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, share and subscribe to support us in creating more tutorials like this in the future.